Hello, in this video we're going to show two proofs of Kramer's rules and that's basically solving a system of equations, in equations and unknowns. So, the, and you can write that in matrix form like this where X and K are vectors and A is an N by N non-singular matrix. Um, we're going to let delta equal the determinant of A and delta sub i be the determinant of the A matrix, but the ith column is replaced by K. Then each i can be solved for this ratio of determinants. And we're, going to, and we're going to prove that two different ways. So proof one, it's going to be a little bit choppy, but you know, welcome to the way I think of things. Uh, proof one, the A matrix is this, you know, we're A11, A22, AN, A1N, etc. And we also need to be familiar with the, the Plaza expansion. And what that says is to find the determinant, you can really traverse down a column or a row. And then, and then as it's this times the cofactor, which is the determinant of everything else. And then if it's here, it's this times the cofactor, which is get rid of that row and column and take the determinant of everything else. So you have to be familiar with this. Sometimes it's called a cofactor expansion. Um, and the, this uh, alpha is what we're going to call the cofactor. So alpha of ij is a cofactor of element aij. Um, and we'll come back to these expressions in a second. So now, switching topics totally. Well, not totally, but a new train of thought here. We're going to let the um, A sub Ki be the A matrix. So these are the columns of A. Except for column K is going to replace column I. So this is actually the A matrix, except for the ith column is column K. Now let's look at that. So now if we want to take the determinant of this, which we're going to just call delta Ki, and we, we expand it down the, this ith column. So each element is times the cofactor. But um, the cofactor for this element is really the cofactor for, you know, the, the A1i element you know because nothing else has changed and so the second element the second element in this column times the it would be the you know the 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 alpha 2 i cofactor and so this is the uh, determinant of this new matrix here where we replace the thing each column now Whenever you're doing proofs, you either have to go back to first principles or at some point assume something's true. And so we're going to assume that when two columns are switched, then the determinant is just the negative of the original determinant. Um, I almost thought about proving that too, but in, in the interest of time, I'm not. So we're going to assume that switching two columns in a matrix and then taking the determinant is actually just the negative of the original determinant. So what's interesting, in this matrix, we're going to switch these two columns. Now, they're identical columns. So the new, uh, so that we get a matrix where we switch the ith, the kth and ith element. And we take the determinant. So it's actually the, the negative of this, the, the original matrix. But if you think about it, when you switch two identical columns, we actually didn't change the matrix itself. So the determinants should be equal. Well, if these determinants are equal, that says that these two determinants must be equal. And then if you if you add that to this side, you get 2 delta ki is 0 and divide by 2. And that says the determinant of this original matrix is 0. So that's a quick little proof to show that if any two columns are identical, the derivative or the determinant is zero, okay? <clears throat> and so there's two reasons why I showed you that. One is we're going to borrow this expression, or not borrow, but have to remember it, the way that we go down this, okay? 
And the other reason is that this is going to help us show this relationship, that the A inverse is actually the uh, uh, adjunct matrix divided by the determinant. Okay, so let's let's show that. So A times this matrix is this. Remember, these are the cofactors, but at the cofactor matrix transpose. Now, when you multiply this out, this column, row one, column one, is the first element in the in the multiplication. Uh, row one, column two, is the one two element, and so we get this, and so you can show that when you multiply this times that you actually get that is a uh, you get the Laplace expansion back okay for for a row and you can show that um, when you're during the main diagonal so it's row 2 column 2 row 3 column 3 it's the determinant each time and then when but on all these off diagonals so this row times the second column, it actually ends up looking like this, which we showed was zero. And so in the interest of time, I'm skipping some of the details of that, but you can show that very easily. And then we can factor out a determinant of A and we get the I matrix. So divide that over and then pre-multiply by A inverse and boom, that's a quick little proof that this is indeed true. So now we can set our sights on our original goal. So back to the original in equations in unknowns, you can pre-multiply by uh, A inverse and get this. Replace A inverse by what we get there. Now, um, now we need to think about this multiplication, this matrix times this vector. Okay, so the result is going to be an n by one uh, vector, you know, and then the determinant of a is is what we call this. Now, this uh, the first row times k is this, but if you look at the the uh, Laplace expansion of that multiplication, then that is just like a column expansion where the cofactors are down each, um, you know, each column times a times k. But instead of using the the actual column of a, we're using the vector k in replace of it. And so um, this is is a column expansion, but where the column that we're using is replaced by k. So this becomes actually the determinant but you replace the, the first column by K. And, and this one here is, is actually Laplace expansion, but you replace the second column with the vector K. And then you, then you get, and then you can show that it's this. And you do that for each element, each component, and then, then we're finished. So generically you write that, you know, the ith element of this X, X vector can be written as this determinant as we wanted to show. Now, the second proof is much shorter and we can do it on one page. So here's our original uh, uh, system of equations and where the, the identity matrix can be written like this where this is just a, uh, a one in the first component and zeros elsewhere. This is a one in the second component zeros elsewhere and etc so this is the identity matrix and we we're going to set up a, a matrix xi where we take the vector x and replace it with the ith vector in this i matrix and so these are all uh, ones down the diagonal zeros elsewhere until we get to the ith column and that's x and then these are all ones down a diagonal and zeros elsewhere so now if 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 i is one so this is in replace of this first uh column vector then if we take the determinant of that so it's the first and then expand across the first row so it's i1 times the uh cofactor of this you know 
diagonal matrix of ones, which is one. So you just get I1 and then it's uh, minus the, but the second element is zero. As a matter of fact, they're all zero. So the determinant would be X1. But, and then you can easily show that if we take the determinant of, of this generically put it in the, in the ith column, then the determinant is actually the ith element of this vector. Okay, so we're going to use that fact here. So xi, if we take the determinant of this matrix here, we get the ith element. And then we multiply it by the identity matrix. And then you can separate multiplication, you know, since it's determinant like this. Determinant of A inverse is determinant of A inverse, so you can take it down and we get and we get uh, this back. Now, this multiplication is kind of interesting. Remember, this Xi is essentially the identity matrix with one column vector replaced by X. So when you start doing this multiplication, you know, the first row times X, you know, the, the first column of this, first row, second column, you essentially get the A matrix back, except for in this ith column, you get a sum, which is this. Now, and if you think back upon our original equation, so the sum of the first row times this X is actually the first element of this. Second row times X is the second element of K. And actually, that's what we're going on here. First row times X, second row times the X vectors, nth row. So this is actually, this column vector is K. So we can write this like this. So the, these are all the original vector column vectors of A, except for the ith column is K. Now, and remember, we still have the determinant signs out front. So the determinant of this is what we were calling delta i. It's the determinant of the A matrix, but the ith column is replaced by k. And then we were calling that delta. So now we're finished. So generically, the ith uh, solution to, to our x vector is this, and we're finished. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. I sure did. That's all I have for today. Uh, like it if you did and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.